Hey my friends, Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. Today we're looking at the 2015 Subaru Outback Limited 3.6R Sport Utility Wagon. This is fully loaded for the Subaru line and it's an all new car for 2015. That means it's got an all new platform underneath, an all new design on the outside, and an all new interior with higher quality materials. Better still, it's got new technologies this year for driver assistance as well as the infotainment that's very important to buyers today. And another wrinkle to this test is in my 20 years of testing cars this is my first Subaru test drive I'm a Subaru virgin can you believe it so I'm actually very curious to find out a number of things about the car that I can share with you and tell you what I think but moreover you know I've been watching Subaru owners for a long time up in the Rocky Mountain states the Northwest they buy these cars and they drive them into the ground for hundreds of thousands of miles 10 15 even 20 years till they're rusting through and then they go to the dealer and they do it again. So it's just a brand that has a lot of loyal customers that come back time after time. And I'm really just curious to learn more about what it is that keeps them coming back. Getting your first perimeter check of the Outback, the look is familiar. While this new sport utility wagon shares no sheet metal with the old one, it brings its all new style in an evolutionary way. Trademark lower body cladding defines the Outback as it has for well over a decade, giving it a rugged look while at the same time offering protection from rock chips, sand pitting, and scrapes from places just like this. Our fully decked 3.6R Limited has HID headlamps which are more rectangular and sleek this year as well as new 18 inch alloy wheels. At the rear, a power lift gate opens at the touch of a button either on the key fob or on the dash. Roof rails complete the adventurous look while adding a sense of height to the Outback. When you park this next to contemporary SUVs, it matches them shoulder to shoulder in silhouette. Its 8.7 inches of ground clearance is more than visible to the passerby as well. Inside is where we find a new level of quality and upscale materials. Subaru added soft touch trims in places like the doors where your arms can feel the difference. The dash and console materials also impress with their feel. The dash is laid out very traditionally in terms of design. As I got behind the wheel, just about all the controls were just where I expected to find them. The limited heated leather front seats were easy to adjust and save my settings and memory. There's generous storage in the center console, glove compartment, and plenty of cup holders to go around. Space is plentiful throughout, as while the Outback has the proportions of a car, it's got the dimensional equivalence to many of its midsize SUV competitors. The interior of the Outback has a number of things that I like. The first is the seating position here. Even though this is sold as a crossover, sort of a sport utility wagon, when you're sitting behind the wheel, it feels like a sedan. And a lot of people do like that high SUV seating position, and generally, I do too, but sometimes I like a little bit more of a low feel. And in this case, that's what this car delivers. Even though it actually is just as large and tall as many of the crossovers, you don't have that feeling like you're sitting in a bathtub like a lot of them do. Now, the other thing is the design in here. This has almost sort of a quintessentially American theme inside here. I've got wood grain trim, I've got a little bit of chrome, a little bit of silver, nice leather, and it's all very tastefully done. And even though when I say American that might scare some people, the good news is the fit and finish is actually everything you'd expect from a Japanese brand. It's tight, there's no big gaps, and there certainly aren't any rattles. There are a few things I do want to pick at a little bit, and to start with, it's the technologies. This has the EyeSight, which is their driver assistance programs, and that's actually a good thing, and they work very well. I'm talking about lane keeping assistance, blind spot, crash avoidance. If it detects an object you're coming up on, it'll not only alert you, but if you fail to do anything about it, it can actually stop the car and keep you from crashing. So those are actually good things. I prefer, however, to be able to turn them off and leave them off when I have a car like this that has those features. I think they always should have an off switch. This car, those features are always defaulted is on when you start the car. You can turn them off. There's switches over here on the left but you have to turn them off every single time you get in the car. And the reason that's a problem for me is because sometimes you lend the car to a friend or another family member, they may not like those features. And so to put that person to task to have to turn it off every time you start the car, 
it's just to me one extra thing you shouldn't have to do. There's no way to get into the computer to actually turn it off. It's just defaulted to on. So that's the first thing there. The second thing is is the touch screen. This has a standard audio touch screen system which is good and generally it works quite well but it does have a bit of a learning curve because this is a hard surface and so it has a capacitive touch which means that there isn't actually a soft film where you're putting pressure on it this actually just sort of reacts to the fact that your fingers there and so what that does is if you're driving along and you get your finger close to it it'll actually react to you and it'll start moving menus around and sometimes you just don't expect that when you first get in the car the first time and you start getting over here and changing stations and things all you have to do is get your hand near that and buttons start automatically pushing and it just takes a little bit of a learning curve to to get used to how that works in our limited, this is the top-of-the-line Harman Kardon 12-speaker audio system with 7-inch touchscreen. In addition to touch and swipe control capability, it also offers voice-activated commands to help with audio and navigation functions while on the road. The rear cargo area came with a nice thick rubber mat, which is fitting, offering a wear-resistant and high-grip surface for all your rugged living gear or bags of groceries. Convenient levers are mounted near the rear opening to release the rear seats down flat for a full open space too. Well, as you can tell, ingress and egress is pretty easy. These are pretty good sized doors with a nice high opening. One of the benefits of being in this sort of crossover SUV wagon realm is the fact that there's a pretty big cabin back here. Headroom, lots of room above my hat, that's always a good thing. And legroom is actually quite generous and these seats are actually back a little bit too. Now, the rear passenger, what do they get? They've got vents back here of course and heated seats. That's on the limited model. There's also a fold down armrest here. It has cup holders. So if you've only got two passengers back here, they're going to have that. Under the hood is Subaru's venerable 3.6 liter flat six boxer engine, which contributes to a lower center of gravity. With 256 horsepower and 247 pound-feet of torque, the EPA rates it at 20 miles per gallon city, 27 miles per gallon highway, and 22 miles per gallon for a combined cycle. Now power from this engine is actually very smooth, it's very refined and you know a flat six engine, very uncommon thing in today's automotive landscape and so really if you're optioning into this engine that's the biggest benefits in my opinion that you're looking at, you're looking at that smooth refined power. Horsepower isn't necessarily going to be the big payoff in my opinion, at 256 horsepower it's not exactly in the same range as most six-cylinder engines in its class. Most six-cylinders, 3.6 liters, you're talking about right around 300 horsepower out there in the competitive range. Um, so really, again, it's all about the smoothness for this engine. I sometimes wonder, you know, maybe a Turbo 4 might be a good option here, might help with that fuel economy. The other thing is, this has the constantly variable transmission, what Subaru calls linear tronic. It's actually one of the better CVTs I've driven, and usually I'm not a big fan of CVTs, but this one has a really good way of simulating shift points so it feels like a traditional transmission, and that is a good thing. Suspension up front is McPherson struts with a double wishbone design at the rear. Extensive quiet tuning has been done for the Outback, including a new acoustic windshield and liquid-filled motor mounts. I think most people will find the ride out here on the highways very quiet. Even though the pavement's not perfectly smooth, I'm getting a pretty stable ride. I'm not getting a lot of jouncing around. It's a very solid chassis, and I'm starting to pick that up about this car that, you know, it just has sort of this high quality tool like feel from behind the wheel. It's not necessarily sporting, but it's solid and it feels like quality. The Outback has standard symmetrical all-wheel drive and active torque vectoring for ultimate control and agility when the going gets tougher than smooth pavement offers. Now I very well couldn't test an Outback without taking it out back. We're out here in the beautiful Sonoran Desert, out on a washboard road, a lot of washes, a lot of bumps, and it just rained recently, so there's a lot of rough patches here that the rain just turned up. So it's going to be a great way to see how robust this car really is. 
This washboard surface is always a great way to test these cars because it can take even the most expensive and off-road oriented SUVs and rattle them apart. And so far what I'm finding here with the Outback is that this chassis and the body structure seems to be well bolted together. I'm not getting a lot of shuttering or rattling. The doors aren't rattling in their frames. I'm not getting a lot of bounce from the dash. And best of all, the suspension and steering isn't giving me any kind of rattling or kickback. And I've been in some pretty nice off-road SUVs that didn't do quite this well. While we didn't test it to extremes, the 2015 Outback symmetrical all-wheel drive system has a continually variable hydraulic transfer clutch which manages the front to rear torque split depending on traction needs. A standard driver selectable X mode optimizes engine output, CVT ratio and all-wheel drive torque management in combination with the vehicle dynamics control to reduce individual wheel spin when in the real challenging terrains. When it comes to safety, the 2015 Subaru Outback offers 8 airbags and makes the IIHS top safety pick plus trophy case status. This is due to its crash performance in all categories, but also its available crash prevention systems, which ours had. In our week of testing with the Outback, we achieved 25 mpg combined city and highway, which is about 3 mpg more than the window sticker promises. In pricing, ours came to 36835 which included the moonroof package and destination charges. Well friends, summing it up for the Outback, I have to say I'm pretty impressed, and I think I see what it is about the Subaru brand that keeps people coming back. It's a car that just feels exceptionally well built, it feels solid, not in a luxury car way or a sports car way, it just feels like a quality tool in your hands every time you get behind the wheel. And it really feels like a car that's going to feel like that 10 years, maybe 100,000 miles down the road. Just my sense of it. Now if you look at the areas where we score the car for the week, it did get 5 stars in most categories. The only areas where it sort of let me down, it was the powertrain. The engine uh, sort of has a mild tune for its size. Not a bad thing, but I just don't see it as competitive. The good news is, I think, uh, unless you just want that extra smoothness and refinement that the 6 cylinder offers, most people will probably be quite happy with the 4 cylinder because the power level isn't that much less, but the fuel economy quite a bit higher. The other area that I really think could use improvement, it's the technologies. The driver assistance systems, I think, really need to have an off switch. I don't like it when those things sneak up on me when I get in the car and fire it up and forget to turn them off. Just a pet peeve of mine. And the touchscreen, while it works well once you learn it, there is a bit of a learning curve for it. All in though, we still averaged four and a half stars for the week. Very good. I'm Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. I hope you enjoyed the ride. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for updates on our latest test drives, reviews, and automotive news. I'm Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. I hope you enjoyed the ride.